Welcome back to The Division 2. In this video, I want to talk to you about the possibility of a Division 3. And I also want to talk about how a Division 3 could be much better than number 1 and number 2. So basically what I've done is written down a little list of things that I personally really enjoyed from both 1 and 2. And then I've written down a list of things I think would need to be in number three to make it really good. And to be completely honest, The Division 2 has two things because I couldn't think of a lot that really stands out. I, I don't know what it is, I just really enjoyed the game. I didn't sit there for too long, this is just stuff that just come to mind pretty much instantly. I didn't want to sit there and just keep thinking over and over and over again because then... I would be trying too hard to think of stuff and it, it wouldn't be as natural and some of it would probably be stupid things they could implement. I mean, some of this probably is anyway. So in terms of will it ever be made, I think The Division 3 probably will at some point. However, Massive Entertainment are currently working on Avatar and Star Wars, as we all know. And Red Storm, who did the PvP side of things, are focusing on The Division Heartland. So it's a tough one to say, but... I don't think Avatar, Star Wars, or Heartland will become big major like franchises. However, I feel that The Division definitely deserves a trilogy. I think they can get the team together to actually make a Division 3. So if it was to be released, I don't think it will be for a long, long time. I believe Star Wars is set to come out in 2023 or 2024 or something like that. And Avatar is towards the end of 2022 if it doesn't get delayed. So I think maybe if they finish up work because they started on Div 2 like just after they released Div 1. So say for an example, they start on Division 3 after they release Star Wars. If that comes out in 2023, could take two or three years development. 2025, 2026, we could maybe see a Division 3. It's all complete estimate. They might never actually make a Division 3, we don't know anything right now. But starting off with the Division 1, some of the things I really enjoyed was, compared to the Division 2, it had a really, really good atmosphere. There were people walking around, the world just didn't feel empty. There was also a big dark zone, and players much preferred that over the smaller split dark zones that were in the Division 2. When it comes to the Division 2 and the Dark Zones, they added normalisation because a lot of players were moaning about the fact that the skill gap was too high, people were getting absolutely battered. But if you take a look at the Dark Zone in the Division 1, there's obviously nowhere near as many people playing. But when you go in there, there are several different zones. I think there's nine different zones. And you can go in any of them at any given time. You just have to make your way around and there's different activities and when I was playing the game actively I was going on to do my weekly assignments and stuff and I would pop into the dark zone. It's not like I was afraid to go in there or anything and I barely come across enemy teams. So not only was it used for PvP, you could use it as a PvE thing as well. You can do the same in the Division 2 but I don't know, there's just something about the split zones, the fact that one's occupied, the other two aren't. It's just really off-putting. I, I feel they should have stuck to the same concept they did of the original game, where they just had one massive zone. Another thing about The Division 1, Legendary Difficulty was available for several missions. I don't know when the new content comes out for The Division 2 in Feb 2022. I don't know if it will contain Legendary Missions. I really hope it does. I've been asking for it for a long time. But they had it all in the Division 1, so I think that would be something very good to have in the Division 3. Like, out of the gate, if they had Legendary Missions available. Then there was the weekly resets in the Division 1 for the exotic caches and stuff, if you're playing on Legendary Difficulty. There are projects in the Division 2 to get your hands on exotic caches, but they just... There's no effort, realistically, because... You've got the weekly shade requisition, you just donate a load of components and stuff. Then you get one for completing 30 floors of the summit, and you can do that on any difficulty, but the summits, like, they said it was replayable content, and in a way it is because you can go back and play through it, but the way they structured it, it just got boring very quick. Whereas with the legendary missions, missions are probably the most replayed thing in the entire game. 
having legendary and weekly resets on those, it was a lot of fun to go back week in, week out and get the exotic caches, especially when you needed some exotic. Then alongside that, you had game modes, incursions, resistance, survival, underground, all that sort of stuff. That added to replayability a lot. I used to go on resistance and farm the classified caches over and over and over again. I did stream after stream for that stuff. They had absolutely nothing like that in the Division 2. The closest we got to anything was the Summit, and the closest it was to any game mode was the Underground. However, in the Summit, the Hunters are only on floor 100. In the Underground, you have a very good interaction with the Hunters. They spawn in whenever they fancy it. So you had a lot more fights and there was a much better interaction in the underground. And then we have the classified gear sets. They would make the gear sets so much more powerful and actually worth using. Besides maybe one or two in the Division 2, I don't use any. Whereas in the Division 1, there are a couple, like there's an incursion. You pretty much have to use a classified gear set to use a shield to get it done. I mean, you don't necessarily 100% have to use a classified gear set, but it helps you out a lot. There's much more use coming from the gear sets in the Division 1, especially having them classified, whereas Division 2, they kind of just dropped them. They added in gear sets, and they made new ones and brought old ones back, but like Striker going from Div 1 to Div 2, Division 2 Striker gear set sucks. And then moving on to the Division 2, literally the two things I could think of were the Strongholds. Strongholds being one of them, I did really enjoy them. Not so much Manning National Zoo. That was a mission to begin with, they changed it into a Stronghold, and not so much Tidal Basin either. But the original three, being Capital Building, District, Union, Arena, and Roosevelt Island, they were very well structured, they have legendary difficulty, it's good to just get a team, they're just long form missions realistically, but it's good to get a team together, go and run some strongholds, you're going to have some fun. And then the other thing which actually got removed, I believe it was with the release of Warlords of New York, was the simulated open world with the control points. You would have factions fighting each other just simply for the control of the control points. Now all you have is like resource convoys coming in and out every now and then. You have nowhere near as much simulation as you did before Warlords released. And not only that, when they did change it, and you've got the the New York factions coming over, you've got the Black Tusk going over to New York, it messed everything up. And if you go to the Crashed Plane on the east side of the Division 2 map, the control point's name is actually Crash Site, you go over there, and a lot of the time you're going to be doing three or four different activities, you're going to have several different factions there fighting, it just gets irritating. They should have kept it how it was before Warlords of New York. But that is my two things that I really liked from the Division 2 that I could think of. There are the different builds and stuff you can put together. I've got a shield build, my DPS, healing builds, skill builds. So there's diversity, but it took them a long time to get that into the game. So moving into what I believe they should do for the Division 3, what will make it much better than 1 and 2 if they ever release it, is a better build variety straight off the bat. No relying on DPS for certain activities in the game, like with the Operation Dark Hours, the first raid, that was pretty much just a DPS check. There were other builds and stuff that people used and lower like metas were found and everything, but at the start, everyone was just focusing on DPS because it was the easiest way to get through. Another thing is I would like to see it set in a new location. New York is getting really boring, because New York's been featured in both games. A lot of people have said, I think it was San Francisco, California. Some people have said even take it to London. Just getting out of the New York sort of area, I think would be really good. Obviously, DC is the main part of the Division 2. But they added in New York as the expansion for Warlords. And seeing it across both games, I don't think it should be included in Division 3 if it ever gets made. And then I would like to see different game modes, similar to Incursions and Resistance, and a lot of people would like to see Survival. I don't just want to see a story and a grind for good builds, because in the Division 2, I've had nearly, I think it's around 1800 hours from the game. They've got a hardcore mode, it's never been updated, it's stayed in beta ever since it launched. It's literally not had one single update. 
And besides that, you've just got, you start your story, you get to level 30, you go through the world tiers, you do the expansion. Once you're level 40, you're just replaying the same stuff over and over again to get yourself a good build. So I'd like to see different game modes and just different activities in general. Again, adding into it, I'd like to see more interaction with the hunters. The hunters, a lot of the community love the interaction and even the lore behind them. And the Division 2 kind of dropped off with the Hunters and didn't do much with them. You had the ones where you could go get their masks if you do certain puzzles. But as I said from the Division 1 and Underground, you have the random encounters with them. The only thing you get with random encounters in the Division 2 is Rogue Agents. And they're nowhere near as exciting or anything like that. This is quite an obvious one, but way less bugs. They've had plenty of experience with this franchise now. They should know exactly what they are doing. They said they learned from the mistakes of Div 1 with The Division 2, and they didn't. They made even bigger mistakes. And then I would like to see features that work how they're supposed to, or working as intended, as they would put it. For an example of something that doesn't, heroic leaderboards have been disabled in The Division 2 for a long, long time. I know a lot of people aren't into speedruns, but... I really enjoy the speedruns, and to see a feature like leaderboards disabled, there's probably several others. If you guys come up with anything on top of this that you love from Div 1 or Div 2, or just things you'd like to see in Division 3 if it's ever made, let me know in the comments, because I'm pretty sure some of the discussions the community can come up with will be very interesting. And then my final kind of note, just so this video doesn't go on for an hour, because I could easily have made it an hour, I would like to see better balancing, less bullet sponge enemies that can one-tap you from a mile away. For some reason, every now and then, the enemies feel a lot stronger than, like, say you have a maintenance on the Tuesday. On the Monday, the enemies will feel alright. On the Tuesday, they'll feel like they're hitting you like a truck. During the Golden Bullet Global event, I felt as though red bars that didn't even have the Golden Bullet were absolutely slapping me. And then when you go over to New York and you've got the big shield guys with the nail guns that make you bleed, they hit you like a truck as well. So just a better balancing overall of the enemies and none of the Yannick the Beard hitting you for like 50 million damage and stuff. Just a better balance with a little bit less of the bullet sponge stuff and I think they would have the balancing pretty much spot on. So yeah, basically overall, a mix of both Division 1 and Division 2 set in a completely new area good atmosphere, some new features, and improvements on older features, try and bring the game a little bit closer to its roots, because the Division 2 really stepped away from what the Division 1 was. The story obviously carried on, but in terms of the features, the mechanics, they changed a lot, and like I'm not taken away from the Division 2 being a really good game, I, as I said, 1,800 hours roughly, but I just feel the Division 1... Where it all started, a lot of players got heavily involved with it, and then Division 2 dropped, and they changed so much, it didn't exactly feel as though you was playing a sequel. Like, the game was only set seven months in the future as well, so it should have been way closer to what the Division 1 was. It even probably would have been easier for them to develop if they kept a lot of stuff similar. And I think they still have a chance to bring back to the Division 2. If, if they wanted to, they could do a little bit of basically enhancing, improving, all that sort of stuff to the game modes like Resistance. And they could even get away with, like, if they put Resistance Incursions, or not even Incursions, just put Resistance Underground Survival, put them into a, a triple bundle of game modes for the Division 2, Update them a little bit so they're closer to the Division 2, like with the, obviously the animations and everything are going to have to be the same. Like the same as the Division 2 currently plays, but obviously they'd be updating their visuals and stuff like that, so it'd be quite a lot of work. But work that into a bundle, like a triple bundle, and I, re I reckon people will happily pay 15, 20 quid for it. I think people would be way happier buying that than what they were buying Warlords. But that's obviously all of my opinion everyone's going to think completely different to what I do. Some things might be similar, but everyone's going to have their own thoughts. Another thing I would add in just very quickly is scrap the classified assignments. They were the worst thing they did. They started off, okay, you go through, you get some collectibles. Then they started adding puzzles in and stuff. And not only that, some of them to this day are still broken. The entrances can't be scanned. 
But that's going to do it for this video. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it.